All right. Hello, everybody. Very sorry for that small delay. Uh, as my colleague wisely noted this morning, it wouldn't be a, an online virtual conference without some technical issues. I am your host today, Molly Thacker, and I'm joined by Bobby Wells. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to check if everyone can hear me okay. Um, maybe you could leave a comment in the live chat and just let me know that everything is working. Awesome, thank you very much. So welcome to your very last session of the first day of TMF week. Um, before we get started, I'll just need to go through some housekeeping rules with you. Oh, there we go. All right, so all sessions will be recorded and available at the end of the day. Um, and all attendees will receive a certificate of attendance for the entire TMF week conference. So that's not something you're gonna get for each session. It's something you can expect to get at the end of the conference. Um, questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. So please feel free to pop them in the Q&A section and we'll hopefully be able to get to them at the end. And finally, after the session is done, please feel free to go network with your fellow attendees. This is a great opportunity to meet people, share stories, make some new connections. So yeah, uh, I highly encourage you to go and network once the session is done. <laughs> All right, so just a quick overview of the session timeline. The presentation should be about 30 minutes in length, and then we'll have about 15 minutes of Q&A. Uh, finally, I'll go over the agenda for tomorrow uh, with you and just go over some of the sessions that you can expect to see. And then after that, you are free to go network. So here is your final session of day two of TMF, uh, <laughs> final session of day one of TMF week, which is put the control back in QC, uh, encouraging a quality mindset before documents get to the TMF. And I will now pass the baton over to Bobby. Thank you, Molly. Nothing like putting the pressure on at the end of the day. Everybody's tired. <laughs> Sorry, my computer is stuck. So first of all, we all have a responsibility to um, the TMF. So I want to talk a little bit today about who, what that responsibility is and what that looks like. So first of all, I want to start to tell, to introduce a little bit about myself and what my experience has been through 20 plus years, which is kind of what has brought me to what brings this, this topic as my passion. So um, throughout my years, obviously, I have learned um, from paper moving into the ETMF that if we don't have a quality document, we're going to end up spending a whole lot more time trying to fix it than if we had just done it right the first time around. So I think that um, all of us can agree we've spent a lot of blood, sweat, and tears trying to go through um, a TMF, um, whether it be with paper or whether it be with um, electronic through, through the different years. And it doesn't matter the system or it doesn't matter the um, the format or the tools that we have, if, if the document isn't filled out correctly, if it's not on the cor correct format, if it's not the correct template, we have to send it back. So we all have a re responsibility to the TMF to get it in there right the first time. So you can go to the next slide. So during the session, we're going to talk a little bit about right, what right the first time, what the right the first time process is, and what your responsibility with ensuring the clinical trial master file um, is to get it to that end stage or what um, to get it to complete for that study, TMF appropriate in real time looks like. Okay, next slide. So we all have a responsibility for the TMF, regardless of what your role might be on the, um, on the study. So whether you're at the site 
or CRO or sponsor and you know whether you're whatever that role looks like within those um, different companies we all have a responsibility um, to get our documents submitted right the first time so um, first before we move any further into the presentation I want to get a feel for the different roles that I have participating this afternoon um, do I have any site personnel on? Are we all CRO? Are we? Do we have a little bit of a mixture of sponsor personnel? Um, if you would type into the chat and give me an idea of what your role is, and if you're CRO, site, sponsor, or maybe you work at a lab or an IRB. So regardless of what that responsibility is, I think we can all agree that our, a quality document starts with whoever originates that document. So if you're a site personnel, you can go ahead and, and move to the next slide. If you're a site personnel, we can agree that a lot of the documents originate on site. So you have just as much of a responsibility to ensure that document is right the first time around as somebody who works at a CRA who might work at a at the CRO or those of us who are sponsor company. So we want to I, I created a checklist and, and so we're going to go through the next series of slides that kind of breaks down what is that GDP process look like? We like to throw out. Um, a lot of different acronyms, um, GDP, uh, ICH, um, FDA, MHRA regulations to try to get things done correctly. But let's really break down what that looks like. What is good documentation practices and why is it there? Um, when we talk about what is TMF appropriate, what does that mean? And what do we have that that defines what is appropriate for the TMF, who has made those decisions, and what tools do we have available, regardless whether you're, you're in charge of the site file, or maybe you're in charge of a CRO file, maybe you work in Viva, maybe you work in Montreal. Um, we all we all have the same foundation. We can all use the same tools. It doesn't matter if you're working um, in a Viva system versus a Montreal system. Um, I've throughout the years, my experience has has led me from um, setting up, following a lot of different client SOPs, working in both. Um, CRO systems and client systems, sometimes, um, you know, a version of both systems at the same time and trying to make both of those systems work together, um, creating processes that will help, you know, those work together or, um, you know, a process that will help us, um, you know, send the, that document back or those documents back to the client at the end of the study the way that they need it to be so that they can seamlessly put it into their systems. Um, so there, there's this thing called the TMF reference model that all doesn't matter what type of system you're using or if you're using a system at all. If you if you can follow that TMF reference model and the DIA, um, you know, guidelines for naming your documents, then, you know, we can all, regardless of which system or, or, or which um, SOPs we're following, the, the two should go together um, harmoniously, uh, you know, for the most part. Now, yes, we get down to study specific requirements and guidelines, depending on the client. And that's where things get a little tedious and, and certain clients require certain documents where certain ones don't. And it depends on the study and the phase. Yes, I get that. 
But for the most part, we have um, a foundation that's the same across the board. So let's take a look at, let's break down that GDP process and, and that ICH process and, and what that should look like to get in a quality document, regardless what type of system you're using. So let's take a look at that. If you'll go to the next slide. So good documentation practices, I actually put together a checklist that at the end of this presentation, you will be able to um, print or take back with you. And it's it's meant to be a guideline for you to, to use back at your, your company or, or, you know, with your own system and please make it your own. But as I've, throughout the years, as I've been asked, well, what does GDP look like? Um, what is that, you know, what, how, how should we adapt that in our, with our company or how should we put that in our TMF plan? Um, you know, at, when I've gone out and I've tried to research GDP, there's not a whole lot of information anymore, uh, like a, a checklist or, um, you know, it's really hard to find it, a lot of information put together. And so I, I put together a checklist as I was building this presentation that I hope you find helpful. So please, as we go through the next few um, scenarios, understand this is just what I, throughout 20 something years have gone by to make sure that my documents um, for my companies or, or, or the sponsors I've supported throughout the years um, will meet um, those regulatory or those guidelines um, at, you know, when, when we have an inspector come in, um, we make to ensure that those documents have those signatures, um, that they're on the correct templates, that we're not missing any type of information that's required to be on that document. So when we talk about essential documents, yes, there's an, there's a set of essential documents and for study for country and for site and those are defined by the TMF reference model. It gets specific based off of your company's practices and guidelines and and things like that. But when it comes to reviewing what is important to be on those documents in order to be finalized, that's where the GDP. Um, practices come in. And um, this is where we talk about a quality document. If we can, if we can all from the site into the CRO, into the sponsor, you know, whoever is the originator, um, document owner of these documents, if we can all make sure that they pass this QC checklist before handing it down to the next person, to the next person, to getting it into that TMF right the first time, it, it, this is going to ensure a quality inspection ready TMF right the first time around. So let's let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, so we've got if, if you go ahead and um, click the first. Nope. Go ahead and click forward. Sorry. So um, if you to make sure that we have a complete and accurate information on our documents, we want to ensure that um, that document all the information filled in is is correct as we know it to be. So if it's an invest, if it's a site document, we want to make sure it's for the correct site. We want to make sure the clinical site information addresses is filled in correctly, um, lab information, things like that. It, it, to your knowledge, obviously, um, we want to make sure that all the fields are filled in correctly. We want to make sure that we have, if you click to the next, you want to make sure your signatures are present. So any required signatures. So in some cases for that particular phase or that study, a signature might not be required. So in that case, put in A so that we're not sitting here at TMF wondering, is this going to be a required signature? Or are we missing this? Is this document not finalized? Because remember, we only want final documents to be sent into the TMF. Um, we also want, and that kind of brings us to that next topic, you can go ahead and click again, draft documents. It's important that we only receive uh, finalized documents for the TMF. We don't want to house every version of that 
1572, you know, that that was a working copy prior to getting it finalized. So just, you know, draft documents can be managed separately or, you know, wherever it's deemed necessary for the team to work on it. Um, <clears throat> but track changes, things like that, we, we don't want to see that stuff in the TMF. Um, you can click forward. Financial and patient identifying information. Everybody knows this. Um, we know that it's a lot of money to run these clinical trials, but we don't need to put that information in our TMF, right? So let's go ahead and try to redact those things out. When we talk about redacting, um, you know, you can just use Adobe to simply put a black box and make sure we can't see that information. Um, same thing with our patient identifying information, things like names, date of births. Um, if your study is taking pictures of your patients, you want to make sure that there's no tattoos or piercings, things like that, that are showing through. Um, and, and so that's the stuff that we want to redact. If there's, if you've got a full page, that's nothing but financials or, you know, images that need to be redacted, then take the whole page out and renumber your pages. And that's where um, some of that is, you just draw a single line to correct it and initial and date, you know, that why that that change has been made. So things like repagination is a simple administration change that is not a big deal. If there's um, a big change, you know, um, data that had to be changed, you know, obviously, we'd want to get in a different version of that document, or if it was somebody crossing through. Um, and initialing and dating why they made that correction we need to have the reason why that correct correction was made handwritten um so things like that but again it's it's not there's no like general regulation around this thing so a lot of people think gdp comes from uh there's got to be some sort of like fda or mhra regulation and they're looking for they're always looking in you know the little handheld books or whatever for the number they want to know like oh what re regulation requires this you have to understand gdp is a guideline that's strongly encouraged and in some cases like financials and phi definitely a requirement but um it's up to your company to kind of adapt to these practices and decide you know per sops like which is extremely important to adapt to such as um, now definitely embedded documents if you go ahead and click um that's a, that's a biggie just because it one if an inspector comes in and they want to know hey was this document filed where it needs to be or is it still sitting as an embedded document that I can no longer open in the TMF, that's a problem. And that's going to cause additional questions and, and running around for people trying to figure out where that document is or if it made it to the TMF. Um, so you want to make sure that you open those documents and you attach them as part of um, that document, the main document, um, and you redact those icons. Um, say, you know, embedded documents, attachments, same thing. Um, the significant relevant correspondence is always a big one because these TMFs are a lot of money. And a lot of times we pay by the, the space that we're taking up. So keeping in mind, you know, we don't want to just throw duplicates of, of the same document in. And we also want to make sure that what we are putting into the TMF is significant and relevant to tell the story of the TMF and help this TMF stand alone um, in the event of an inspection. And keep in mind, I you know sometimes I have to remind people that it's not telling the story right now. I mean, definitely we have to keep it up to date in real time, and we always have we always tell people you know an inspector could walk in at any point in time and we need to make sure it's up to date as of today. But it's also to stand alone years from now when none of us might, you know, I, I, I won't, I might not be here, or, you know, my um, project lead might not be here. And so this TMF needs to tell the story of the study um, 
you know, that was that was running and, and be able to um, show the compliance um, of that study um, and that we ha we were inspection ready, you know, from beginning to end at every phase of that project. So you, we have to keep those things in mind as well. OK, you can click ahead. So let's um, if every, you know, to, to just finish this up, run through a couple of scenarios on our own or uh, as a group here, um, if we can. So a um, couple of questions. If you are performing your first quarterly review of the TMF and you notice like you've got an investigator brochure that's missing um, the principal investigator signature, what what do we do? Anybody? If anyone can wants to answer in the live chat section, you guys can do that. So question is, you are performing your first quarterly review of the TMF and notice the investigators will sure is missing the principal investigator signature, what do you do? What do you do? That is the question. <laughs> We're getting some answers in here, Bobby. Um, All right. Are you able to see the chat? I am, yes. Okay, perfect, excellent. Past TMS specialist for a second QC. Is it just missing um, or was it not done? Contact site for signature. All great responses. So yeah, send it back. I like that. Um, so go ahead and click. So this, so let's, so let's, yeah, so let's, let's break down our GDP here. Um, so again, this is that we like to use these fancy ICH um, GDP and, and like to throw out these fancy um, codes, right? But it, it all comes down to our Alcoa, right? So you can go ahead and click. And so this one's going to come down. You can click again. This is going to come down to that, um, the plus, right? So you can click again, Kimberly. There you go. So this comes down to um, we have to have the information recorded as it was observed. Um, so it needs to be complete and consistent and in real time. So this is a, one of those scenarios where we, we can't go back and um and try to do it again um so we just have to figure out a way we just have to figure out a way to move forward and document our mistake you know document how it was missing um or why it wasn't done in the first place right so all these things get a little tricky which is why if we can identify it right away that it, that we are missing the signature, then we can we can correct it the right way a lot faster than months or even years later. Sometimes when when we find these things, so all great um, suggestions or, or great um, ideas. So go ahead and move forward. So the next one is um, if we're taking over a site, which we've all been in this scenario where we're taking over um, for another team member and we often hear, um, I wasn't, the, you know, I wasn't in charge or I wasn't the one um, over this site when this mistake happened. Um, but, you know, you're, we, we're now over this. Um, now that we, now that we took this over, we inherited this. So we have to, we have to figure out a way to fix it. So um, you, you notice that in maybe one of your file reviews months later that the initial FDA 1572 section seven was left blank blank. What can we do to dot to fix this? Is there is there any good solution? Because we just talked about we can't go back, right? We can't backdate the initial 1572. Any ideas?
So you can, yep. So it comes down to the Alcoa again. So let's take a look at, sometimes we, you can go ahead and click forward again. Ask for an account from the site explaining what should have been in section seven. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to go back and look at the, the, the site file to see if maybe there was a complete one in there, right? Um, yes, Stephanie, great idea. I mean, all we can do is collect, make sure that we have one with section seven done and that it's signed with the most current date. We can't backdate, right? And um, that's, that's how you move forward. So, but all great. We, so I see some note to files there. Um, I So there's times when we do have to generate note to files. And I think I saw um, where there is going to be a session on whether to do a note to file or not. I think we, uh, we are trying to get away from the notes, so many note to files, if at all possible. Um, but there are times when, you know, there's just no way around it because we do need to document why something would be missing. But um, I, all this, like, um, definitely just collecting a new 1572, making sure that it's filled out completely is, is extremely important. So all those sections, oftentimes section seven gets left blank. That's why I brought that one up. I, if there's going to be something missing on that 1572, it's always section seven. I don't know why. Um, okay, great. So you can go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, last one. So during an interim review, again, you notice we're missing a financial disclosure for a sub I who is no longer at the site and your study coordinator has offered to write a note to file and provide to the monitor at the next monitoring visit. Is this a great solution? What do y'all think? If you guys want to share your thoughts, um, you can go to the live chat and just share your thoughts there. I I think what we were talking about before th with the note to files, um, you know, sometimes they're necessary to document what what happened or why. Um, sometimes they can't be avoided, but I think the most important thing is if we're doing things right the first time around we we can try to collect these things in real time right we that we wouldn't have the need for a note to file um but yes a financial disclosure is something that's that is important that we should have and you know there you go daniel this is a deviation from the process so um a note to file is insufficient okay um and yeah we would have to um figure out Again, it kind of goes back to why we don't have that note to file, making sure I like some of you said, making sure that the sub I even participated. Definitely, we have to know a little bit more about this, right? But again, it comes down to this is a this is all stuff we see and we hear all the time in the TMF. Um, we get it in. We don't have, you know, especially with Viva and Montreal now, those systems allow us to enter or set up our additional site contacts. So when we go to file things and we don't have that investigator or we notice months later we don't have certain um, essential documents for those contacts, it, it brings up missing documents or it starts to... Um, you know, um, flag, you know, those red missing metrics or um, milestones um, in the TMF system. And that's where you start as as site or as um, study team personnel, you'll start getting emails or you'll start getting reports or um, metrics from the TMF saying that something is bringing your um, your overall completeness down. Um, so that's why, again, it's just really important. You can go ahead and click forward, Kimberly. We want to remind you all these things, extremely important, and, and why, you know, we would be sending things back and we can't file them into the TMF with, without um, understanding 
who it is that's participating or why we would be missing initial essential documents that we should have. Okay, you can move forward. All right, you can click again. All right. So you can go ahead and click forward again. So this, just to kind of summarize my, my um, topic here, again, we all have a responsibility. I have a responsibility as the TMF manager to make sure the documents coming in are quality. Um, the TMF specialists or TMF leads have a responsibility to make sure that the documents being filed in the TMF are quality documents. The as CRAs, you have the responsibility to make sure that the documents being sent into the TMF are quality. As site personnel, you have a responsibility to make sure the documents being generated, created, um, and finalized are quality. Um, sponsor, you know, and CRO project study team functional leads, we all have a responsibility to make sure the types of documents being finalized, being generated, created, finalized, all meet um, GDP, ICH, MHRA, FDA, country, local regula regulations um, requirements to make sure that these documents um, are final and, and all of the um, sections are filled out or you know put in a um, making sure that all the pages are present making sure there's no information cut off and making sure that once that document gets into the tmf when an inspector comes in to look at our documents that they'll be able to see all the documents think of in terms of big excel spreadsheets if we don't have it saved a certain way in the tmf they can't look at all those tabs if you don't have those docu anything that attachments embedded documents um, attached you know, opened up and attached or filed in their individual classifications it leads questions as to whether that document ever got filed appropriately things like that we don't want to lead an inspector to a door um, that looks like it's locked and we don't know where the key's at. You have to think of it. I always tell people when there's hyperlinks or um, documents or embedded icons that we don't know whether that document or that hyperlink, um, we generated the documents from that. That's exactly what we're doing and we're causing us, we're giving ourselves more work to do during that inspection. So I'm going to leave you with this. I think that we've, if you've been in the business long enough, you've probably at one point or another been told, um, you know, you need to put the patients first, or we need to, we need to speed up timelines. Um, you know, so let's not, we're not, you know, let's, uh, we need to, um, not worry about this document so much, or we're not going to worry about, um, going back and trying to collect these documents, you know, we all have a responsibility for our patients in the TMF and, and for, for, for us or for me, my, my why, um, is we all have a reason why we do this and, and our response, my responsibility is the quality of the TMF. And that is me putting the patients first because without a quality tmf we're not gonna get any we're not gonna get there any faster than if we had just done it slowed down and did it right the first time so i leave you with that i really apologize for all of the um technical difficulties right there at the beginning um and for the rough start but i hope that you enjoyed this segment and um, that you enjoyed the GDP checklist that I was put together for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bobby. Um, that was a great presentation. And thank you so much to Kim as well for jumping in there and helping out. Um, that was a, a wonderful presentation. I don't think we really have time to do uh, to answer any of the questions that you received, but hopefully you could be able to answer them either after in the lounge or sure. just respond to them directly in the platform. Amazing. 
Um, and I am going to share my screen again now, just to give you all a quick overview. There we go, of what's left in store. Now, thank you, everybody. You're, you're too kind. <laughs> Um, so tomorrow is going to be day two of TMF week. Here's a quick look at the agenda. Um, we're going to be going over TMF health checks, uh, the archivist mindset, inspection experiences, uh, inspection readiness, the TMF versus ISF debate, a bunch of cool sessions lined up for you tomorrow. So I hope to see you all there. And we will also be now doing a networking break. If you want, feel free to head over to the lounge, head over to our booth, talk to some of your peers, uh, keep the conversation going. And finally, I uh, just wanted to remind everyone that we do have our TMS Pulse Check survey going on. We'd love to hear from you. You can enter to win the super cool pair of iHeart TMS Converse. Um, so yeah, if you haven't taken the survey yet, please fill it out. It's super quick. It takes six minutes and we'd love to get your opinion. Thank you so much everybody for attending today. I can't wait to see you all tomorrow. Bye.